Hello, and welcome to Reaching Dream Fulfillment. I have a special guest today. I am back. Yes, this is the third interview at the Crew Barber School. The third, the third interview. We did an interview before about other options besides college. We did an interview with an ex-Marine uh, that uh, served in Iraq. And now we have a special guest here. And this has to do with leadership. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Richard Law, it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Pleasure to know you. This was an interview that one second I didn't realize what I was doing, and then the next second I said, that's it, I'm doing this. So I did this completely because he inspired me. Yes. I was sitting in a barber chair, imagine this. And I just saw him, the head of the barber school, just giving this pep talk. And all of a sudden my mind went, it was, I felt so inspired. I was in that chair and I was ready to get up. And I was so inspired. I, it was like watching General from, yes, Eisenhower, who later became president before D-Day, as he was giving the inspirational speech for the troops to hit the beaches and liberate France. I saw you, and you liberated my mind to be inspired to give this very interview that we're giving right now about leadership. I saw a leader, and I said, that's it. I want to interview you. I appreciate you, Bob. And um, I appreciate your insight, and, and I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What does leadership mean to you? There are many forms of leadership. Uh, me personally, uh, from a child, when I was a young kid, I would bring all the kids together and I would be the coach in a way, player coach. So I put them in their positions. I, I give them um, feedback on their abilities, uh, teach them how to run plays and that type of thing. Uh, and that takes a leader. I would play quarterback. So what do we consider the quarterback on the football team? The field general. He's the field general. He's the leader. Okay. He doesn't play defense, but he's still the leader of the team. Uh, so with me and through my experience, uh, I've always been a coachable person. Um, I've, I've always been one to take uh, good and bad criticism, constructive criticism, um, because I always wanted to improve on myself Okay, so that I can help someone else. Now, if my skills are sharp in whatever genre, whatever we're doing, um, I can be the most effective leader, all right? But a leader sets an example, first and foremost. They follow that example to people, you know, or, you know, the subjects who are with you. And uh, it's most important to assure them that they're being led in the right direction, all right? Now... Uh, I'm sure many people have different uh, opinions or interpretations of a leader. But me, I see it as someone who uh, cares for others first, is going to consider their feelings, uh, is going to appeal to people's emotional sensitivity, but give positive feedback and positive reinforcement uh, in whatever mission you want, whatever mission you set sail on. Um, yeah, I, I really feel like uh, we need more leaders. Now, not everybody can lead. True. Not everybody can lead. Some, they may want to be that, but don't really understand the necessary steps it takes to uh, be there and be a true steward of people's futures here at the Barber College. I'm a steward of people's futures, people's ambitions, people, what they want to accomplish, what they want to pursue. So it's important 
that they can depend on you, rely on you. Your word is your bond. You have to speak the truth. You got to stand by your word. The things that I like that you came up with is it's not a one size fit all. That was one of the first main points you made. Mm -hmm. And that how you lead depends on different people. Different people have different motivations. Some might be through humor. Mm -hmm. And I like the thing of always telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes what the leader tells us is for our own good. But sometimes it's something that we might not totally agree with at the time. And sometimes later, when they're out in the real world, in the field, some of those things that you're saying will come back to you. For example, I had a coach for pull, and sometimes I'll be in a certain situation. I'll even hear the voice of, of who coached me before a certain shot, if it was a tournament or what, what have you. Yes, 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 yes. And, and you know, with that, with that, um, that's giving them one to go on. If you can plant something in someone's psyche and they can take that, it registers and they take it and it becomes an action, then I've done my, my job. I've, I've done what I set out to do. All right. Um, but people have to recognize you as a leader. Mm -hmm. See, that's very important. Otherwise, they're not going to really listen oh. and take it in. No, it's like a teacher. Teacher, you have to pull them in and bring them in. Now, you may have some students that aren't there for your study. Yeah. <laughs> How are you going to lead the horse to water? You can lead them, but you can't make them drink. Hey, you can only help those who want to be helped. Yes, sir. That is so true. Yes, sir. But now, however, um, I like the challenge in that, though. Okay. Okay. See, see me, uh, I'll try to set out to conquer the that. resistance. Yes, sir. And I think that's important because you never get a leader never gives up on anyone. But a leader does have to make decisions. Okay. So it'll come down to a decision that you have to make on someone, but you have to exhaust all resources before a decision is made in terms of whether they're going to be in the band, whether they're going to be on the team, yeah. whether you know if they're going to uh, remain uh, present. Because you, you, as you know, one can steer them all if you let it, meaning can steer them down the wrong direction. Lead them astray. A true leader is going to identify that and he'll know when it's time to disconnect from rogue. Yeah. Rogue. <laughs> yeah. Rogue exists. It's yes, really, really, and, and really always really will. And always will. Mm -hmm. What do most people or some people not fail to realize about leadership? What, what do they fail to realize? Um, I think, and this is my opinion, I, I believe some people, they don't recognize that, that no one gets anywhere alone. See, even me, I have a, in barbering, I have what I call a sensei. I have someone who took me under their wing and gave me uh, the tricks of the trade. Now, I could cut hair, but I didn't know the trade secrets, okay? The tricks, you know, the, the little nuances that uh, uh, most people can't do on their own that they come to us for, all right? Um, with, with me, um, I am, uh, well, I'll say, it, I'll say it this way. When I realized that I needed others to help me and I needed a steward is when I improved most. That's that's when uh, everything started, the ball started rolling a little faster. I started coming along and I understood. I said, well, uh, 
I can't do this alone. Oh no. I need it. So I would use, I won't say use, but I would utilize my colleagues around me. But it was always that one. And I was like, that's that's who I'm going to follow. See, people have to realize that you're going to, you're a leader, but leaders also follow. It was someone that they had to follow to become that. All right. So with that being said, uh, I am very big on, I'm huge on working together, banding together for one common goal, but there is one captain, all right? There's a captain of the ship. Now, I just work at this school, but I have a superior here that I have to follow and trust, okay? So, hey, as long as you can trust the ability of someone that's going to steer you in the right direction, then failing is not an option. It won't happen. We'll succeed, all right? So, I'm very huge on no one gets anywhere alone. That's so true. No one does anything by themselves. And that's a, a key big point because even CEOs of these big companies, they're good at one thing and they focus on that one thing. May it be content, may it be whatever they're good at, and they build the great team around them. Yes, sir. And that's the, that's the important thing, like a championship team. Exactly. It's the same thing. If you don't have weakness in certain positions, the whole thing... That's right. That's right. Can crumble and having a mentor. Yes, sir. And continuing to learn. Exactly. No matter what, not just say I'm the leader. I don't need to prove or learn new yeah. techniques, etc. Yeah. Because you have the head coach, then you have the assistant coach, then you have and so on and so forth. Exactly. So and the, and the scout and etc. He has a team. Exactly. And no one does anything alone. Oh no. All right. But we all have positions. So it's important to play your position to 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 the fullest. If you play it to, to the fullest, because you never know when you're asked to step up and be that leader. Now, anytime I have students leave, see, at any, um, like, for example, I had a, a, a student who just graduated last week, okay? Now, what I like to do is this. I like to say, hey, that's the leader there. He was a leader. On the, on the level you guys are on. Now, who's going to step up and take his place? Mm -hmm. Who's going to be the new such and such, whatever it's, you know, the name is. Can you even challenge him just like this. Oh, you yeah. Say the exact yeah I say it. Who is going to take his place? Is there a little hesitation, a little fear in their eyes? Some respond, some don't. Some say, me. I will. Some say. And that's right away? Yeah, yeah, I've had no hesitation. I've had with confidence. Me, say it. me, I with will. With confidence, yes, I will. And look you in the eye and say, "It's me, it's me." So, you know, with that being said, that's interesting. Leaders are born every day. All right, they are, but however, but they may not realize that's who they are, or they may step away from the challenge of it. Mm. It's like you know the saying. Uh, uh, some people have a fear of success. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's very real. That's very real. And I've experienced that uh, through others. Okay. Now, I'm, I can recognize who's who. I can label them and tell them, hey, you're the next guy. You're that guy. Sometimes I do that, too. It's you. You ready? I like to challenge people in that, that way um, because you, you're going to get the most out of them. You know, you want to, you know, you, a leader is going to extract that, those leadership skills out of an, another, because whether you uh, want to realize this or not, I'm here to breed young business entrepreneurs. Now, an entrepreneur for the most part is what? It's a leader. Mm -hmm. Stepping out is a leader, stepping out on faith. I don't have that paycheck coming in. Oh, yeah. I have to make my own paycheck. Okay. 
And that's really, you know, uh, what I'm centered around now. And I can only, uh, I'm only here because I'm experienced in that area and I, I understood what it took to take that next step. That's awesome. And that's a big part of what I'm doing and what this uh, YouTube channel is about. Mm -hmm. It shows all my wins and losses. I share everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I hope you guys are learning the lessons as I go through. <laughs> <laughs> are there natural born leaders, do you think? Yes, yes. There are. But like I said, some will step into it, some won't. Yeah, we'll flee to the hills and go, ah! <laughs> Some aren't born leaders, but they become leaders, too. You said it earlier. It's not a one-size-fits-all. True. It's what you fit into. Okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I think there, there, there are. It's just a person has to step into it. It's almost like, um, let's just say, a gentleman, he has a call in his life. God has a call in his life to be a uh, a reverend or a pastor or okay. a bishop. Now it's up to him to recognize it and step into it. If you run from it, exactly. you tell him, you see. So I believe leaders, yeah, leaders are born every day, but they have to step into it. Yeah. What is your leadership style? I'm I'm more of a player's coach. We'll stay on the team. Oh, sport okay. Day. But I'm more of a player's coach. And when I say that, um, and we mentioned it a little earlier, different personalities. Yeah. All right. You have to learn to deal with everyone individually. But you're still a whole, but you deal with each person individually for who they are. Um, some people can't take their rah, 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 rah. They go the other way. Yeah. Most people prefer someone who is more uh, soft-spoken, maybe easygoing, teaching, teaching them to be their own boss and make their own decisions. Because self-motivation is nothing greater than self-motivation. Oh, no. Yeah. Nothing greater than self-motivation. Uh, so I, I try to inspire self-motivate. Let's go. Barber school is a lot of independent study. All right. So they have to be motivated coming in the door. You understand? So uh, what I will say is it's a, it's a, it's a thin line. And when I say that, it's a thin line um, because depending on who you're dealing with, you know, you, you have to, some people, you do have to kind of get over here. Some you do. Yeah. Some you don't. But when I say players coach, hey, you know what? We're all in this together. So let's all work together. All right. I'm going to let you be who you are. I'm not going to take away from who you are. I'm going to enhance what you're bringing to the table. All right. So you can come to me and talk to me about anything. Uh, I am a. Uh, I'm approachable, okay? I'm, I'm very approachable, and uh, I'm going to get my point across, and I just hope that they, you know, adhere to uh, the approaches that I that I take, but I'm not a crack the whip type of leader, okay? I'm not going to whip you in the shape. I'm not going to shackle you or or put you in a, in a yoke, no, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm going to allow you to be your own independent entity uh but i want to see more i want to see you motivated and, and i want to see you develop your your business style okay. your business approaches all right but me i'm more of a i want to say laid back so i like to say player coach you come talk to me about whatever you need whatever you need to have or get them be there for you bam let's go so what i can see is it's more than just Here's how you cut, do this cut or that cut. You talk about the future in the business side and how to, outside of the physical part, 
the steps to be successful in this business. Yes, sir. And even grow a business. Yes, sir. It's more to being a barber than just cutting hair. I yeah, some people will assume that. that at first. I will always but you, this is that. beyond that. It's beyond just the haircut. Okay. So here, um, I'm here to develop, uh, build character. Okay. We all understand who we are. We're in a trade school. In this country, you don't go to university, junior college, university after high school. You're sort of on the outcast type label. Okay. I say, hey, we know where we are. Okay. And we, we know what's around us. We, we know what um, uh, we we can what traps we can fall into. We're, we're not going with the script of things here in this country. So we're sort of like the outlaws in a way. But we take the straight narrow path. You know, all the negatives we leave them right outside that path, and we go straight and narrow, and we keep our minds focused on our short term goal because barber school is a short term goal. Exactly. So, and they can see it. Yes. Yes. It's obtainable. I mean, it's very, it's tangible. You know, I like to make things tangible. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can visit, visualize it and see it. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Just stay on the path. Stay on the path. <laughs> exactly. Yes, sir. Consistency. Yes. Put in the hours. Listen. Study everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hear for a purpose. And ask questions. Please do. Please do. Love them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those questions probably challenge you. They do always. And, and But you know, I like a self-starter, a self-motivated. I like self-starters. That's who I am. Self-starter. Exactly. And I like to play for a player's coach as opposed to a dictator. Oh, yeah. Coach. No way. Has your leadership style changed over time? Yes, I would say so. Yes, it has. It has evolved uh, because I've learned who I am. All right. Now, when I first started to uh, guide people in barbering and start teaching, uh, I came in and I was a little more, uh, I was more, um, um, what, I, what I would say is I, I was standoffish a little bit because I didn't want to, uh, I, I didn't want them to see me on their level. Okay. So I would, I wouldn't really engage with them on more of a personal level. Then I would keep everything strictly to the curriculum, um, to the, the, the practical work, and I would kind of play the background. So I, I figured all, all it is for me to do is to ensure that they understand the work, ensure that they understand haircutting, um, when you're reading from the book, they're, they're doing all their responsibilities, and that's it. You know, it's more than that. Okay, a real leader is going to be more personable with people okay in general uh, you're going to want to understand that person a little more so that way you can really help them uh, emotionally uh, you can help them uh, feel more confident in who they are and what they're going and, and the, the crusade they're on you know their 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 path that they're on you know you me personally I want people to treat me the way I would treat them all right so I went more, I said, well, you know, it, it's, it's more to it than just the curriculum and the practice. It's a personal thing. Okay. Because you never know what people go through. You, you never know what motivation they need to get up every day, you know. So with me, I want to um, always be open. And I've learned that I have to be more assertive when it comes to making them feel like I'm genuinely here for them. All right. It's a difference. It's a difference because you have some that'll just show up and you have some that'll, I like to say, show out, meaning, hey, I'm here, but I'm really here for you. And I want you to know that. And I think I give a really good example of that. Because anytime a student leaves here, especially they were under my wing and I've gotten close to them. Oh, they leave with a speech when they receive their certificates. <laughs> All right. That's that's just the way it goes. Because and I can only give a speech on someone. Why? Well, how could I give a, a personal personal speech on someone that I don't know? You can't do it. Oh, that's a really good point. You can't wow. do it. So I can give speeches 
because that's how engaged with them. Personalized only for them, and you only give that speech once because it's individualized. And it's not rehearsed. No. Oh, awesome. Natural as heck. And they won't forget that speech and they'll pump up the others when they hear this speech. I have them That's looking cool for me idea. now. No, I have them looking for me now. And I expect my speech. The young lady texts me today and she's a day class. You know, I'm teaching a okay. day class. Day student looking for a speech. Okay. Like, she, you weren't even under, she wasn't under my wing. But you know what? She was. She was under my wing, you see. And maybe I didn't realize it. But she identified that. Oh, that's cool. Because of the person. And the rapport. The rapport. There yeah. you go. Do you have a morning ritual for success? Every day? Uh, this is what I will say. Um, I'm the type to get up and get out. Okay. My morning ritual is I'm getting out of here today. <laughs> Because I feel strange laying in the bed or being around the house all day. There's a whole world to go see and a whole world to... You got to get up and go. So, I'm, as soon as I wake up and I'm ten toes down, I'm getting myself Wait. together to get out. We're not doing the little snooze button thing. Mm -hmm. It's bam. It's time to go. You know, my wife for years... You just don't kind of take your time around the house before you leave and get up a couple hours early or... No, no, no. I'm up an hour before. It's go, go, need. go, go. That's all I need. The green lights. Yeah. It's so bright, it probably hurts your eyes. Yeah. So I don't have a particular ritual every day. But one thing is for sure. Um, get up. Thank the man upstairs for giving me another, another opportunity out here to help someone else. I'm out the door. I never sit around the house after I wake up. What is your uh, superpower? Or, hmm. Hmm. If I had to, if I had to say this one, okay. If I had to just narrow it down, I would say I have the ability to open people up. I have the ability to uh, bring a different energy and feel to a room. I have, I have the ability to. Uh, assure people of who they are uh, just by paying attention to them. You have to pay attention. Okay. And people recognize it and they know it. They can feel it. They go like, that guy's all right. So when I come into school, I like to come through the front door. I don't come in through the back door. I come through the front door. Because that's what they're watching, that front door. Because we have clients that come through the front door, you know, and they, they're cutting hair. So they walk, they see me come, shaking everybody's hand. They pack a joke here, take some hair. You know, my thing is, oh, so you thought you weren't going to see me, huh? Okay. So I'm, I'm, uh, I say my superpower would be um, I can step in a room, I can command a room, and I know how to open people up. I try to teach my students that too. You have to open people up. When you can open up people, then it becomes more personable. Next thing you know, they're sharing all everything with you, um, they're talking to you about whatever, and they're comfortable doing it, and uh, they'll refer you to others as well. That's a big part of this business because a lot of people are talking to their barbers. Right. And sometimes it's the conversation. That keep them coming. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, they're getting a satisfying cut, but they could get a satisfying cut somewhere else. Anywhere. They could. Barbers come a dime a dozen. Yeah, they could. Mm -hmm. So there's this other interpersonal relationship that is developed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And this is true beyond this. The real estate agent, somebody else could sell a house. That's right. So this could apply to other businesses. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's a big part of business. Yes, yes, it is. I mean, you know, it really is. People are going to go with who they're who they're most comfortable with. Exactly. You know, that's how it goes. And um, I've been in business personally um, as a barber over ten years. You know, I've had I have a clientele uh, list that's pretty pretty wide. 
And uh, of course they come for the cut. They trust me with the cut, uh, but they also trust me with their emotional sensitivity. Yeah, their dog just died or whatever. Doesn't matter. If his mother just passed away. I'm going to let everyone in the room know that he's going through that. That we're going, to, we're all going to empathize with him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What would you tell a 20 year old version of yourself? That would be really cool. I'd like to do that. To go back. Yeah, and talk and talk to it. Oh, first I tell him, don't get married until you touch it 50. Okay, because me, I wasn't ready for marriage in my 20s. Okay. But if I just was looking at myself like I'm looking at you right now, your word is your bond. Always keep your word. Don't procrastinate. Don't let anyone define you. That's so true. Okay. Because uh, sometimes people we love try to define us. Mm -hmm. And their beliefs become our beliefs. Or right. their limiting beliefs become our limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And that's part of leadership, too. That's, that's right. a huge part of leadership. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't let anyone define you, young rich, and enjoy your youth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Enjoy your youth. Make the most of it. Don't waste any time. Uh, have fun, but prioritize properly. Oh, it's so true. Oh, God, yeah. Prioritize properly. And um, I would say last, um, don't lean so much on your own understanding, okay, because you don't know everything. And, you're, and, and don't ever be the smartest man in the room, because if you're the smartest man in the room, what will you learn? <laughs> that is so true. And a lot of times it's good to find a mentor that is – 5, 10, 15, 20 years where you want to be. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly. And then it's people like that that will challenge you, and then you'll... Exactly. If you're the smartest in the room... What are you going to learn? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Uh, I like to talk. I do, too. It's never a problem. It's never a problem. All right. so, so you enjoyed your visit to Reaching Dream Fulfillment? Yes, always, always. And support his YouTube channel. Thank you. It's Mr. Bob, he's a solid, solid guy. And it's, it's, it's nice to know him. It's a pleasure to know you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to get to that 1,000 subscribers. Yes. And, re and remember, remember, there will be a special video when we get to 1,000 subscribers where we have the $50 uh giveaway up with Amazon and I will be telling asking a specific question from a video that you can only get the answer from watching that particular video but don't worry it's entertaining <laughs> thank you Mr. Bob thank you sir thank you sir appreciate you